Hey guys, in this video I want to present a solution to the final problem from EMO 1977. We are asked to prove that there exists exactly one function f from the positive integers to the positive integers such that for all positive integers n, f of n plus 1 is strictly greater than f of f of n and that this unique function is f of n equals to n. We can clearly see that this function satisfies our functional equation because n plus 1 is greater than n. To prove that this is the only possible solution, the idea is to assume that we can find an n with f of n not equal to n. Moreover, since we are dealing with an inequality here, it is reasonable to differentiate this into the two cases that f of n is less than n and f of n is greater than n. So let us start with assuming that we can find an n with f of n less than n. In this case, n must be greater than or equal to 2 and therefore plugging in n minus 1 into the original equation tells us that f of f of n minus 1 is less than f of n which is already less than n and therefore we can conclude from this that f of f of n minus 1 is less than n minus 1. So this value is smaller than the value we would get if f were the identity function and therefore from our assumption that f of n is smaller than n we can get a new value n prime either being equal to n minus 1 or f of n minus 1 such that f of n prime is less than n prime and I'm going to prove this. Our first conclusion as I said is that f of n minus 1 could be less than n minus 1 and we also want to get something out of this if this is not true so let us consider the second case b where we start by also assuming that this is not true. Therefore, if we let k be equal to f of n minus 1, then k is at least equal to n minus 1. And so this inequality exactly tells us that f of k is less than n minus 1, but we now know that this is less than or equal to k, and so k is indeed of the desired form. As promised, we get from our assumption that f of n is less than n, a new value n prime such that f of n prime is less than n prime with either n prime equal to n minus 1 or n prime equal to k which is f of n minus 1. We want to use infinite descent to bring this to a contradiction. Maybe a first idea to do this is the following way. We take n minimal with f of n less than n. In our first case we indeed would get a contradiction since n minus 1 is less than n so this can't be true then. But we don't necessarily have that f of n minus 1 is less than n. And so this kind of infinite descent doesn't give us a contradiction. The way to go here is the following. Namely, we should take m a minimal positive integer such that we can find a larger positive integer n with f of n equal to n. So we have assumed that the value f of n, which we denote by m, is minimal. We want to use the cases a and b to bring this minimality of m to a contradiction. If we take a look at a, we have that f of n minus 1 is less than n minus 1. In order to get a contradiction to the minimality of m in this case, we need that m prime, the value of f of n minus 1, is strictly smaller than m. In other words, we would be done here if we also knew that f of n minus 1 is smaller than m. We can indeed achieve this by refining our first inequality here. Namely, if we also denote f of n by m here, as we have later on, then we know by substituting in n minus 1 into our original equation, which is possible because n is at least 2, that f of f of n minus 1 is less than f of n, so this is less than m. Then we just reformulate our first case a to say that f of n minus 1 should be less than m and we have already discussed that this will be a contradiction in the end. And so in our other case we get a weaker assumption namely we only know that k which we define to be f of n minus 1 must be greater than or equal to m here. But since we have strengthened our first inequality here this is no problem because now we know that f of k is less than m 
which is less than or equal to k and therefore we are good here as well. In conclusion, if we take in our first case a m prime to be equal to f of n minus 1, then we know that m prime is less than m, but we also know that it is equal to f of n minus 1, where n minus 1 is greater than or equal to m, and so this already contradicts the minimality of m. And for b, we can now proceed in the exact same way. We define m prime to be equal to f of k, which we know to be less than m, and m is less than or equal to k, and in the exact same way we get a contradiction, and therefore our assumption was false, and so there doesn't exist such an m, and therefore f of n must always be greater than or equal to n. We can use this fact to get rid of the f of f of n in the given equation. Namely, we now know that f of n plus 1 is greater than f of f of n, but this is now at least f of n. Hence, f is a strictly monotonic increasing function. But now we can apply this fact again to our original equation to obtain that we get the same inequality for just the arguments. Namely, we get that n plus 1 is greater than f of n for all n in z plus. And combining this with f of n is greater than or equal to n, we obtain that we must have f of n equal to n for all n in z plus, which is what we wanted to show. And therefore, we are done. <laughs>